Welcome to Electra Online. Since we're going to use mesh analysis in order to establish currents and voltages in circuits to try and determine the power provided or absorbed by certain components within the circuits, we need to figure out a standard by which we can know when we have power supplied and when we have power absorbed in the circuit by particular components. And also it's nice to know when we have a voltage rise and a voltage drop as we go around a mesh in the circuit. So first of all, let's take a look at the current supplies and the voltage supplies. Whenever there's a current being supplied or voltage being supplied, the direction of travel around the mesh doesn't matter. Or should I say, yeah, I think that's the best way to say it. The best thing to do is to look at the direction of the current relative to the direction of the current within the, uh, the current supply, or we look at the voltage direction inside the voltage supply. So let me explain. If the current supply has a current in one direction and the current in that part of the mesh or in that part of the circuit, the mesh, has the same direction, then we say that the current supplies power. However, if we have a direction of the current by the current supply in one direction and the current in that mesh in the other direction, in the opposite, then we say that the current supply actually absorbs power rather than supplies power. A similar thing happens with the voltage supply. If we have the positive on this side and the negative on this side, and the current inside the mesh where the power supply is located is in the same direction as from the negative to the positive inside the power supply, then we can say that the power supply supplies power. But if the polarity is such that the positive and the negative is in reverse direction to the current, in other words, when the current in the mesh flows from the positive to the negative terminal of the power supply, then the power supply actually absorbs power, doesn't supply the power. And that's how we can tell the difference. It doesn't matter how we travel around the mesh, it simply only depends upon the relative direction of the current in the mesh and the current in the current supply and the polarity of the voltage supply. But then when we come to resistors, it does matter which direction we travel around the mesh. So here we have indicated that we're going to travel across the resistor in this direction. Now here we have the current in the same direction as the direction of travel around the mesh, which means that then we travel from the positive to the negative end of the resistor. And again, the reason why there's a positive and a negative is because we'll have a voltage drop from here to here. And that means that if there's a voltage drop in the direction of the travel, then power is absorbed by that resistor. However, if the current is flowing in the opposite direction of travel, in such a way that now we have a voltage rise across the resistor, then power is being supplied by that resistor. Of course, the resistors don't actually supply power, but in this case, as we're traveling around the mesh in that direction, it will act as if it supplies power, and therefore there's a voltage rise traveling across that resistor. Now, we've already seen that in case of capacitors and inductors, there's not going to be any power supplied or power consumed. That's always going to be zero. However, we do want to make sure that as we travel around the mesh, if the current flows in the same direction as the direction of travel across a capacitor, we will have a voltage drop. If we travel in the opposite direction of the current flow, then we'll have a voltage rise. So that's still the same as it is for resistors. We just don't have any power supplied or power supplied. That's always zero. Same with inductors. If we travel around the mesh in the same direction as the current, we'll have a voltage drop across the inductor. If we travel in the opposite direction of the current, then we'll have a voltage rise. So that still be the same as we have for capacitors as we have for resistors. Again, with inductors, pure inductors, pure capacitors do not consume any power. They don't absorb any power. Only resistors do and only power supplies and current supplies, depending upon which direction the current flows relative to the polarity and relative to the current inside the current supply. And that's how we know the difference when power is absorbed or when power is supplied in a circuit.